Welcome to Jewish Boy Calls His Mother. I'm your host, Sadia. This is my mother, Ima. Uh, I just want to say um, I was misinformed last episode when I mentioned that the Simpsons weren't going to go ahead and were going to go remove the choking of Bart. Turns out it was a whole clickbait article and it was just a rumor and they officially made a statement saying that it wasn't true and that they're not going to do it, which is interesting enough to let you know <laughs> Everyone's susceptible to fake news and everyone can get susceptible to the hype. Uh, luckily, this wasn't too much damage, but it's just interesting to think about um, getting caught up with everything when it came out with The Simpsons. And they had to make a whole giant statement because so many people were up in arms and all upset about it. And then they had to whole, have a whole thing of like, no, it's it's not going anywhere. It's not going like we're still going to have Homer choke Bart. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but Oh, the blood loss. You mentioned something <laughs> interesting uh, today was that you were noticed that the past, I would say, year or two, uh, the past year or two, you were talking about um, being, I guess, I'm trying to find the right word for it. I'm not going to say ageist, maybe being, being Can we say age discrimination. A, thank you. Being <laughs> age, discrimi being discriminated by, by your age, age discrimination. Um, and you've experienced it. So tell me about the, uh, the horrors and pains you've suffered through <laughs> through age discrimination. But what it is I found is that I think the people, as you get older, uh, of course, mm -hmm. I'm not getting older, but um, as you get more older, middle age, experienced, experience, um, I think the people around you are just concerned. And um, they're concerned for your safety. And so I found, and um, my sister also had similar experiences where, um, you know, people are concerned about you doing something that might be too strenuous. Um, and oh, here is a couple of the things that happened um, to me uh, today um, where I work. Some of the kids like spilled things on the floor. And it's very important to wipe it up quickly because, first of all, you don't want anybody falling in it or you don't want it getting on your shoes and you tracking it around the room and having a big yucky mess. So I took a little spray bottle. I sprayed the floor and I um, took some paper towels and I got down on my hands and knees and I started to wipe up this, you know, this food that this kid had spilled all over the floor. And my coworker said, are you OK? Do you think you'll be able to get up? Should you really be doing that? I said, yes, I'm fine, I'm fine. And I wiped it up. And I, I'll tell you the truth though, I, I do need to have a chair out, to have a chair nearby me so that I can pick myself off the floor more easily. But <laughs> just move the cat. Just move the cat, getting in your way, showing love and attention. What's funny is actually um <clears throat> just have to show her tush. <laughs> what's what's funny is uh, uh Ruthie got like some new toys for uh -huh. our cats. And like, they are just ecstatic about it. One of them just like grabbed it and, you know, it's just like playing with it. And she, he's not growling. He's just like doing this weird, like, like, I, I think it's a happy, like an interest growl, so to speak. Like, you know, like you, you eat, you're chewing food and like you hum to yourself. That's what it yeah. like sounds like. I don't, Ruthie might think that it's just, he's being I, aggressive. I guess I think babies, just... babies do that. Oh, really? I guess, yeah. Sometimes babies or young toddlers, when they're eating, but mm, when they're happy and they're eating them, mm, yeah, they actually start humming while they're eating. Yeah, yeah. So, so like, so one of the one of the cats was doing that was like just hum, like humming to himself as he was like chewing and playing with the toy, <laughs> and like we're trying to get him to eat, and he wasn't interested in eating. He just wanted to play with the toy. Um, <laughs> so I had to take away the toy in order for him to actually, you know, eat it. Um, so back to you were saying about being horribly uh, age discriminated against mm. by society and how yes, it affected too. you emotionally and how you want to go on a whole long diatribe <laughs> just like they do on cnn and fox news obsessively compulsively talking about every kind of bs possible or go, go on tiktok oh my God. About did, did you it, hear like, about the new yeah. tiktok craze what apparently there's a new tiktok craze where people are reading osama bin laden's eight page manifesto and making a post about how he they agree with it and this isn't like a joke this is real and it's just so psychotic it's, it is it's like and you know who owns tiktok i know the chinese government it's a whole issue i don't have tiktok yes. I, I, when i first started this whole I. social media thing 
People were like, oh, get a TikTok. I'm like, no, I refuse to get a TikTok. Good. This is nuts. They're also, they, they, they find they're also responsible for spreading out of the anti-Semitism. Yeah. Obviously, it's... obviously. I saw this girl on TikTok. I don't think she's Jewish. I think this was a put on. And she starts to cry. She says, I'm Jewish. And I think Islam is the best thing that ever happened to the world. And she's crying about how great Islam is. I'm going, come on. It's uh, I, honestly, I, I, I would. I think this was all put on. Obviously. I, I don't. Sadly, I don't think it was put on. What happens is you have a lot of people that are very misinformed and misguided uh, that are Jewish, and then they get sucked into this crazy, like situation. What's mm-hmm. happening nowadays, where you have these like Jews for for peace that are really just horribly pro Hamas, pro like Islamic terror, and just fine with with everything, and they put up these signs of how you know sad and horrible you know it is and it's just like it dry it drives me up the wall and it frustrates me and i think it frustrates a lot of people about how you know like we have all these capos that are just running mm-hmm. amok yes you know like the like during the um during the dc uh rally that happened this week it was like mm-hmm. close to three hundred thousand people you know yes. all, all of the all of the the hiltons were like sold out that night you know it was a lot of people and like news news anchors and news people were saying oh it was tens of thousands of people and and oh it was like just downplaying it and there was like i saw a video of like a notori carta people just holding up their signs and it's just everyone screaming russia russia and it just it's it it bothers me but it's just like there's a part of me that kind of remembers when i was a kid in 2002 during that rally um israel israel rally and it's just like you know what? Hashem is with us. Let's not forget that. Mm-hmm. And all these people that are against us, it doesn't matter. It's piss in the wind. And that's how I see yeah. it. It's just piss in the wind. It doesn't matter. I remember um, it was, um, oh God, it had to be back in the 1980s or so that the Rebbe was talking about Utu Etu Visufar. Mm-hmm. And he says, they can do, they can put as much money as they want into the media. They could take out all the news programs, all the advertisements, he says, and spend, you know, and do everything they want. He goes, it's all going to mean nothing, yeah. totally nothing. And I remember CBS that time did an entire week's program on the Palestinians, showing what a wonderful peace loving people they were. And they had this interview with Yasser Arafat. And mm-hmm. we talk about yellow, yellow journalism. So yeah. the news anchor, says to the interviewer, says to Yasser Arafat, will you agree to recognize the state of Israel? And Yasser Arafat said, uh, we would agree to peace under most circumstances. And then all of a sudden they froze the frame and you heard the interviewer's voice say, you have just heard, y- yes, you have just heard Yasser Arafat agree to recognize the state of Israel. I went, what? He didn't say that. What are you, tra- no, what are you trying to do? It's it's all the house of cards are falling down, you know. The um the Israeli military has just entered like like a Shifa hospital, and it's just exposing all of the BS that's been ha- happening, and everyone finally America like officially made a statement saying that yes, it's true, you know that that Hamas is is firing you know rockets from hospitals mm-hmm. and using them as human shields. Like they're finally admitting it, and it's just like. And I'm realizing it's so interesting to see non-Jewish people react to it, where it's like non-Jewish people are like, is everyone taking crazy pills? Like, mm-hmm. first off, people are like pro-Hamas. They want to wipe out Israel off the map. October 7th, they like mutilated bodies and rape people and kill babies. And everyone's for that. Like I'm seeing, like I'm following certain people mm-hmm. on, on Instagram and they're like all like, yeah. they used to be like quiet about it. Now they're like, what the heck is going on? This world's going crazy. And I think mm-hmm. it's just like, I know it's going to be fine. And I've said this, I don't think I've said this on the podcast, but I think I've said it to you. I've said it to Ruthie. I've said it to so many people. <laughs> We're going to be okay. The question is by how much? Yes. That's your problem. Yeah. And that's, and that is what, what evil, evil does eventually fall, but oh, the damage it does in the meantime. And when will it right, rear its head again? You know? And 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 I'm I'm really happy seeing a lot of Chabad representation in the military and a lot of Chabad representation throughout this whole 
you know, stance and seeing more Mashiach flags and whatnot. And I'm more than happy to just, I can't wait for Mashiach to come, but oh, we still have to be in our due diligence <laughs> and understand that like, like we still have to live in today's world. You know, we can't just whatever. And I was even speaking to some people and who, they were serious about it. They asked me, they're like, Hey, what do you think? Do you think we should renew our children's passports? They're up for renewal in about six months. Should we renew mm-hmm. them now? Definitely. And I'm like, I'm like, honestly, I wouldn't wait that long. Get them now. Get it, mm-hmm. get it taken care of now right. because you never know. You're, right now is up to date passports. Right mm-hmm. now is the you never Always. know motion. It's just like you got to, uh, you know, ears ears to the to the floor. You know, uh, like eyes at the prize. Just try to stay alive. Try to stay focused. Like. I, I wanted to go downtown Baltimore uh, last month to shop. So I was going to go to a bar I really like. Um, uh-huh. Ruthie suggested it. And she asked me, you know, let's go downtown. Let's do something. And I'm like, no, let's not. Because what if I go down there? I'm not taking off my yarmulke. I'm not mm-hmm. hiding who I am. But right. what if we go there and like there's some drunk idiot that, that has to have his say and he confronts me? Mm. you know and i have to go ahead and say something and it's just like it's i I would rather not put my pregnant wife in danger and all that jazz Mm -hmm. because of some you know bs so i'm like let's just you know let's just go to toe pizza and make it easy (laughs) and and that's and that's the thing what's what's so frustrating we're like we're like i'm making decisions now for me and my my wife's safety Uh, because of what's going on in the news i know and it's just like mm-hmm. I'm now like I'm now adapting and I'm understanding more and more about how like how the Holocaust not necessarily happened, but how the reactions before and during happened. Mm-hmm. Where it was just like this odd denial. And by the time it was realization it was too late. Mm. And you still had emotions towards your friends and enemies and random strangers mm-hmm. at this time. You know, so there, there, there's you. It was, it was, it wasn't just a simple, like, let's leave. We can't leave. Oh no! It's, it was such a slow burn, and then, but then, by the time everything happened, like, boom! It was like a match the flame. Just everything went, went nuts, and like now, mm-hmm. I'm seeing it where it's just like, I'm aware that the left always had a, 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 a hidden <laughs> anti-Semitism. And I always knew the right had a very strong, open anti-Semitism, where it's just like, are, are you familiar with Ben Shapiro and Candace Owens? You bet I am. Yeah. Oh, I, I heard. I didn't see the. I didn't see the confrontation, but I heard something that she, she did there, there that she did something like very, unaccept. She said some very unacceptable things, challenging his Judaism. It wasn't so much it, the main, the main situation. Was Candace Owens was making uh, uh was having having like a statement and, and I I try not to look into it to be honest because it just gets my blood boiling and it gets me stressed out and I have to avoid mm-hmm. stress and just try to like yeah just just be aware just enough to know what's going on in case yeah. I, I got a bounce but not enough that it gets mm-hmm. me crazy right but essentially Candace Owens was trying to um. Kind of, kind of upplay um, Israel's like racism and issues of apartheid and things like that. Mm-hmm. And she had some other issues previously where she was like legitimizing, you know, Kanye West's statements that he made a while ago. And like she's had some mm-hmm. issues here and there where people like even before this were telling like Ben Shapiro, like, hey, this woman's like an anti Semite. She has some real issues. Like we we don't want her here. And then finally now, because it like, it, it, it finally boiled over and now Ben Shapiro is having some kind of clash with her. But I think the reason why they can't fire her is because there's some kind of like, I guess, contract that she has that if it's breached, they got to pay out a lot of money. Ooh. So that that's an idea in my head. Or what it could be is, you know, when it comes to the media, if there's a conflict, Keep it interesting. Run with it, <laughs> even even if there's a conflict of sides. Just like well, you said, there was some there was some newspaper owner. Was it was it the the man who earned who owned the New York Times years ago? Said to one of the reporters, "If it bleeds, it reads." Who I think yeah. yeah. I think that's how the news really is. Like it's a selfless, mm-hmm. 
self-destructive <laughs> like piece that like everyone leans into where it's like like Candace Owens and Ben Shapiro probably have like a whole issue with each other but they'd mm-hmm. rather keep it running because maybe if they have a resolution they'll be interesting maybe they don't have a resolution it's interesting <laughs> but keep it alive because it, it makes people click on their articles you know so there it could be something it there's a lot of speculation uh, on that end. Um, conspiracy theorists are probably thinking of everything, but I think I think in a way it's a mixture of everything. Where it's like there probably is an issue with Candace Owens, there probably is an issue with Ben Shapiro, they probably have issues with each other, but they're probably writing this out to see what happens and hoping hoping to come up to to with a resolution. But like something's going to hit, and we're all just sitting back and watching it, you know. <laughs> but. Yeah. All, I, all, I, all I know is that I'm not a major news figure, news analyst, and they're making a heck of a lot more money than me, so I'm staying out of it. <laughs> well, it, it's also, it's like, I think a lot of these new, news analysts get give, get too much credit, honestly. I think there's so many crapshoots anyways that to go ahead and say like, oh, this guy knew what was going on, or this guy knew what was going on. Like you could, you could read all the history books in the world and try to predict whatever you can. But well, I was listening to one time. Um, where was it? I'm trying to think where I, where I heard this. Might have been YouTube, where this um, news analyst was giving a rundown of the history of how many times the climate, um, was it the 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 climate um, people said that we are heading to disaster we're overpopulating we're using up the resources we're we're this we're heading for disaster we're causing climate change the climate change people so he gave a whole history of it i think who was it i forgot who it was not charlie was it michael nolas i forgot who it was was one of these big news analyst people he gave a whole history starting starting i think during uh, and like right after World War II, and he gave like a whole list of exactly what years they said there was going to be disaster, what years they said that climate change was going to destroy the earth, what years they said that the, these resources are going to run out, and it's like a list of like it was a tremendous list of like like fifty two times between nineteen forty eight and today that they predicted that we were heading for disaster. Yeah, it's so. I mean, it's it, it's but it's like something though. I'll tell you the truth. I remember in my day how we were all pumped up that the Russians were going to drop an atomic bomb on us. Oh, and you know, we went through this one time, one of our podcasts. And I mean, every time you turn around, every every 10 years or so there's a, another disaster that's going to destroy the earth it's going to you know kill all of us and guess what we are still here yeah i that's why like i don't believe half the things the only concern i have is for my safety and my family's safety that's all i care about so like if i hear in the news something happens you know in croatia or something happens in canada the main thing I have to ask myself, it's kind of selfish, but I have to ask myself, does this affect me? And if the answer is no, then I, I leave it on the bottom of my barrel. Like it's yeah. it's nothing to worry about. Yeah. Besides the fact that it's like sometimes you wonder, like you listen to the news and there's a lot of, a lot of news that's very, very upsetting. And then you think it was like, what could I have done about it anyway? What can I do about it? What could I have done about it? And like, really, there's very, you're, unless you're some sort of big world leader, I mean, the best the news can do for us, it can help us to decide who to vote for, basically. So, you know, who's, who's going to form the best policy? Yeah, I mean. But, um, but, with, this, with, with, but with all the, like, the fake news that goes on that's been pointed out, so now you now you don't know who to believe. But the thing, and the thing is, honestly, in my opinion, and I think it's get, and it's going to get my, we're talking about news anchors making predictions and being full mm-hmm. of shit. So <laughs> my prediction of all of this is it's going to push humans to the brink of just not 
being not paying attention to anything yeah. and just starting the idea of a religious belief in God yeah. and just believing in God in a way yeah. and 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 it could be atheists and agnostics but mm-hmm. they're still going to have this belief that it's going to be all right it's going to be fine and then to just shut out the negativity oh and, by the way I'm so glad <laughs> and 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 I think that's where yeah. where we're going to go to after all this blows over so, you know where people are going to be like there. I'm done I'm done yeah. listening to negativity. I can't do anything about it. Yeah. These people are psychos. You know, I, it doesn't matter. I, I'm I'm finished. The, um, and I'm getting to the point where, like, sometimes when I listen to the radio, I think to myself, why are you listening to this depressing radio program? And so instead, I go on Chabad.org. And I, you know, turn to some one of their, you know, one of their Torah learning sessions, which is a lot more uplifting. But, oh, I heard something. Yeah. Um, on, we have a talk show analyst down here named Eric Erickson. Okay. I think he I think he broadcasts from Atlanta, Georgia. Why well, that we've talked about but, this? And that's what happened was he said tonight. Evidently, there was um an interview on Al Jazeera mm-hmm. where they wanted to interview somebody in Gaza that like was I think was in the hospital was one of the people in the hospital or something. And they thought this person was going to be on the Arab side, and was going to really talk against the Israelis. Well, instead, the guy did just the opposite. The guy started to yell, Hamas is the reason I'm suffering. Hamas is doing this. To us. Hamas doesn't care about his people. And he just started to yell about how horrible Hamas was. And the interviewer actually actually went, got totally embarrassed and like started to walk away. Yeah, he I didn't s- know how to handle it. I, I think I saw that video. <clears throat> And yeah, I didn't I, see the video, but I heard about it. Um, you know, from this uh, Eric Erickson. Uh, yeah, no, I, I I saw the video. Um, it was, if I'm not mistaken, it was more of like they were asking him what's. They were they was talking talking to a gentleman, and then he was talking about like it's Hamas that's talking about using human shields and things like that. And like I said, you can only lie for so long. Yeah. You can only lie for so long. But Abraham Lincoln said, "You can only fool some of the people some of the time." Something like that. I don't yeah, know. You can't fool all the you can't fool all the people all the time. Yeah, and it's just like that's where where I get hope. Where it's like it's gonna be fine. People are, are gonna just you know call them on their BS. It's all gonna be a bunch of lies, anyways. Like I'm. That's where I'm not worried, and mm-hmm. where I I have faith in humanity and faith in God. Where it's just like it's gonna be okay, and. I, yeah. I need to make sure that I'm safe, my family is safe. Right. You know, right. you might go through a rough day or a rough week or a rough month or even a rough year. Yeah. But the one thing that helped me is I tell I told myself like this will end. Yeah. This will end. Nothing nothing and goes on forever. Nothing yeah. goes on forever and this will end. It just it just seems so <laughs> Yeah, oh my God. When you're going through a hard time for some reason it seems like it's never it gone. It feels end. like forever. <laughs> yeah. It feels it like it. forever and you do what you can to like grab at comfort as strongly as possible to like calm yourself down and relax. And like, then you could just re- like resettle yourself and hit the ground running again. Um, what, is it, what is it? Nietzsche said, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, so do you want to go, you want to go back to my age discrimination stories? <laughs> is it interesting? <laughs> well, kind of. Um, okay. So, so anyway, so that was one thing that happened today where, you know, I got down the floor to clean up this mess and, and my coworker goes, goes, are you okay? Should you, should you really be getting down the floor like that? I said, yes, I'm okay. I can do that. Well, um, when I was in Barcelona, mm-hmm. um, I looked on my GPS to see, I wanted to go to the Guillet Park. And mm-hmm. so um, I asked the, um, uh, the man at the concierge, about um, that my GPS says that bus 52 takes me just 10 minutes away. It's a 10 minute walk from the bus stop. So he says, I don't think you should take that walk. I go, why? It's only 10 minutes from the park. He goes, I live around there. It's a very challenging walk. I go, I don't mind. I like walking. I'll be okay. He goes, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure it's all right. So I get off at the bus and lo and behold, the walk to the park is... Those remember the, the famous steps 
that are at Washington Heights, V steps that go up to Fort Washington or Washington, you know, Fort Washington Avenue, where you those huge steps, three of those. Oh wow. Three, three of those. So I go up, I start going up the steps, and there's a group of British tourists that are walking with me. And we none of us were expecting this. And there was there's an escalator there, but it was broken. So we all had to walk up the steps. So we're all chugging up together going, we can do this, we can do this, we can do this. It was a family, the husband, wife, and kids, and me and we're going, we can do this. We get to Goyer Park, I walk in, and one of the park rangers, a female park ranger, comes over to me, and she says, do you intend to walk through the entire park? And I said, I mean, I paid money for my entrance fee. I said, of course. She says, are you sure? I said, yes, I'm sure. I said, why? See, the Goyer Park is on a rather high, you can't call it a mountain exactly, but it's it's a, it's a nice high foothill. And it's a circular path that goes around this foothill to the top. And she says, are you going to be okay at your age? Are you sure you can do this? I said, don't worry, I've got plenty of water with me. I have snacks. And on each level, there are people that are selling um, cold bottles of water from coolers. I said, don't worry if I, if I said, if I get tired, I'll stop, I'll sit, I'll rest, I'll be okay, which I was. I did there were quite a few times when I just sat and just, you know, enjoyed the view and then kept on walking. Or it was like at the bottom that around the aqueduct there, there was this amazing violinist that was playing this beautiful violin music. I sat there for about an hour and a half just listening to him. It was very, it was a very, very nice excursion. But, you know, my sister also was starting to get this from people. Are you sure you can take this walk? Are you sure you can do this? Will you be okay? Yes, we'll be okay. I think it's funny you say that because I think there's a lot of like mindsets with people that if you ever ask these old people that are still functioning, they just don't think about being old in a way. They don't think of themselves as being old. I, I myself, however, kind of do because I enjoy it. It makes me happy. Like I kind of morbidly love the idea that it's like, I'm technically middle age right now. No, you're not. You're still spring chicken. I am a spring chicken, but think about it this yeah. way. Twice my age, you know what the average lifespan of a man is in America? I hate to ask. 75? Um, let me check. Oh, wow. It went up. <laughs> um, the average life expectancy for a man in the United States is 77.28 years. Um, okay, so, so, yeah. maybe by the, but, but by the time you hit around that age it's going to be increased because of medical advances oh so here it is the average US male sorry according to the CDC is 73 um, a, a woman is 79 a, a, a man is 73 I, but I, I thought it used to be like 86 I was well, like expectancy no it's been it, it it, it's down? been dipping it's been dipping since 20 it's measured it here's the thing uh -huh. the measuring goes at 2020 so okay. in 2020 there's a lot of deaths so averaging things Ooh. out it kind oh, of dipped COVID. yeah, yeah so it COVID. dipped from like originally it was at like 78.79 in america and it dipped to 77.2 so uh. it, it so it dipped um but mm -hmm. it's like it it it's just a statistic. You don't have to think about it because like, you know, you, you have Bubby and Zadie lived until their nineties, you know, yeah. pop lived until his eighties. Bubby, what did Bubby? Bubby Donna away? smoked a lot. I, she did. She smoked a lot. You're right. Yeah. She smoked out in her younger years. How old yeah. was she? 76. I think 75, 76. Yeah. She died of, like lung, died of lung cancer. Yeah. But it's just like, I don't know. I, at least for me, it's just like, it's life, man. It's just, it, 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 it doesn't like people want to live it. I, I'm trying not to go down the morbid route right now, but it's just <laughs> like, it's just like, I don't know. For me, I want everyone to live long years, long, healthy years. I want them to live long, healthy years. And I want me to technically live long, healthy, functioning years. Mm -hmm. But like, there's a lot of moments when I'm like going through some shit where you're like, you know what? I, I don't <laughs> mind taking it out. <laughs> I can't technically do anything about it, God. 
But, however, and of course, through his probably sadistic uh, humor, he'll probably make sure I live to 120. <laughs> well, one time, Aunt Judy was in a situation that was very, very embarrassing. Mm -hmm. I can't talk about it. That's honestly. fine. You won't have to. But she said at that point, it was so embarrassing that she started to pray. Dear God, if you love me, you'll take me now. <laughs> That's how embarrassing it was. Oh gosh, uh, yeah, I've had some embarrassing <laughs> moments when I was younger. I didn't. It was weird because when I was a little kid, till I was about maybe twenty, I was, I no, sorry, eighteen. I was very sensitive and got embarrassed easier, easy. But once I hit twenty or eighteen, there was this moment where it's just like. I wasn't embarrassed. There was no Ooh. level of embarrassment I had. I just like, I was like a, a firecracker. I just said whatever was on my mind. I did whatever <laughs> I wanted. Like it was like a weird little moment of mine where like, like I look at some Facebook comments or Facebook statuses I made. I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, this is terrible. I quickly deleted it and make sure no one else saw. Like, oh my God, I can't believe I thought that was okay to say. Um, but it's just like being, just being an idiot. And then like, as I was, when, once I got older, I became more conscientious, um, not embarrassed, but conscientious of realizing, like, I'm not the only person in this world, you know, because mm -hmm. I, I guess maybe it's a guy thing. Maybe it's just a young 20 year old thing where it's like you think like you could take on the world. Nothing matters. Like you just do it and it'll be fine. Like, ah, oh, let's go. And then like you take all these risks. And then like over time, as you get older, you're like. These risks didn't work out, and that risk didn't work out, and that risk didn't work out. And... Why do you think historically societies send young, like teenage men, like men between like seventeen to twenty-five? Why do you think we send those guys off to war? Because they have that mindset. It's yeah. like, what the heck? I'm going to get it. They they feel invincible. Uh, they feel like uh, they feel immortal. They they feel like, oh, what the heck? I can do this. I can do that. Yeah, I could do anything, anything better. I could do anything better than you. No, you can't. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Oh, my gosh. That, that's what's so funny. It was just like, because I'm, I'm getting older, and I'm definitely getting this feeling of like, whatever happens, happens. I, I would like for my life to be easy, and I'd like it for it not be, you know, such an issue. But like, whatever happens, happens, and just roll with the punches. You know, um, you know, I like I've, I hear this a lot among black people when they've got problems. You know what they say? They just shake their head and they go, it's always something. It's always <laughs> something. Like, total acceptance. This is life. It's <laughs> I, I think total Jews have total resignation to the inevitable. I think I think Jews have a su same thing as well. But it has to be like another phrase. I'm trying to remember. At least for me, it's like, hey, it could be worse. I think that's like a Jewish thing. Oh, Rabbi Gordon has that joke. He says, uh, he says, somebody told me matters could be worse. And guess what? They did get worse. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like that. I think that was a whole joke. Like, what's a Jewish optimist? And hey, it could get worse. <laughs> could be worse. Yeah. Yeah. That's an old joke. That's an old one. Um, or like there's another joke where it's just like uh, um, uh, two Jewish guys walking down the street. They meet each other. Uh <laughs> Chaim says to Yanko, how's business? Yanko responds, it's great. Did you, did you get that? No. Because there's always a complaint normally. Oh. Like it's fine. Like it's good. Oh. I, was, I was waiting for the punchline. That I was definitely that. a punchline, but I, I have to explain it. Line. It's like it's like dissecting a frog. If I have to explain everything, it kind of loses the whole essence. <laughs> so I'm just like, no, whatever. <laughs> Is what it is. Um, you know, I mean, I, yeah, I, I must admit, you know, like, and when it comes to like jokes or even like cartoons, like, um, yeah, like, the, like these cartoons are just supposed to be funny, whatever, you know, um, in the newspaper. I don't, I hate to say it, I don't get a lot of them. You know what's funny? I really don't. You know what's really funny? There's what? a Reddit page. You know what Reddit is? I've told you multiple times, but do you know what it is? It's a social of media course. site. Of course, so I do. it's fine. Whatever. <laughs> It's a social media site. And one of it, it, with the social media site, what it, what it has is you create different communities and different people flock to them. So there's all sorts of different people with all sorts of different ideas and wants and needs and all together with their own like communities and people flock to them. One of them was 
ex- I think it's called explain this joke. Oh, and no. people post all sorts of things that are like, can you please explain this joke? I don't get it. And some of them are easy. Some of them are like, oh, I know this answer. Others are like, huh? I don't know this either. And then I checked the comments and someone answered it. But like, it's okay. The one thing I kind of learned, like, because thanks to the internet, I'm never alone. I'm never alone. There's always someone out there, the same thought as me, that already thought about it 15 years ago, came up with an answer and posted it up online like five years ago. And it's already had like 500 comments on it. Like, <laughs> believe me, I, I don't have an original thought. And that's comforting to me. Some people like don't mm-hmm. like it. I, I, that's fine by me. That's fine. So well, I'm, don't worry about it. I was, well, I was, um, when I was at the dormitory at Makan Khanna, there was this girl who I forgot I was telling her something. And no matter how I explained it to her, she was just not getting it. And finally, I lost pa- I was young. I was impatient. You know, young people tend to be impatient. And I lost patience. I said to her, what's that, a cantaloupe on your shoulders? And she didn't get it. And she looked at her shoulders. She goes, what are you talking about? There's no cantaloupe on my shoulders. I don't get it either. The, your head must have a cantaloupe on your shoulders. I've never heard that before. <laughs> it's it's from World War II. It's an old, it was from an old war, old movie that took place during World War II when <laughs> this guy was trying to explain something to his German girlfriend. And she just wasn't get about democracy, about representative government, about like the type of government we have in the United States. And she just wasn't getting it. And that's when, so, so he, and, and um, out of frustration, he yells at her, what is that, a cantaloupe on your shoulders? I, so the, the, your head, you know. Your so, head's a cantaloupe? Instead, head, instead of thinking. That's, it's a cantaloupe. That's, that's an odd, I'll be honest with you, I agree with your student. Like, that's an <laughs> odd little thing. Like, I, I know that makes zero sense to me. And anyone else that can't correlate anything where it's just like, it's like, if you're trying to say it's hollow, maybe be like, what's known to be hollow? Let me think. Like, um, a pump. No, it's just like, like something known to be hollow. He had a pumpkin. He was wearing a pumpkin. The headless horseman. Yeah. but that doesn't. Remember he had a pumpkin. (laughs) I guess. I don't know. Like, I just don't think, I just don't think there's anything. Really, yeah. Sorry, I agree with that student. I think you're just your comment was from the World War II age that your you know father was like, ah, are your candle up on your head? Rah, rah, rah. Did your dad ever have any like sayings or comments like that? Like my like Tati would always say, if my grandmother had wheels, she'd be a, trolley, be a car. trolley car. Um, um, I'm trying to think of stuff. Like, well, I know one thing. Um, there were there were some lines that were pretty funny that my father said that we thought were originals. We found out later they were Marx Brothers movies. There, the Marx Brothers, like um, like he was talking. We were talking about just one time we were telling about my father. We we're, ta- we're telling my father, me and my sister. You know, we would share like disappointments that we had. Like didn't get we didn't get the part in this play that we wanted. Um, we didn't get um the class assignment we wanted, and so my father would say, oh, he says. Life is full of disappointments. Like, look at me. I married your mother to have children. Imagine my surprise when you came along. Oh, cute. And that, that was... that's, that's, a, that's a Marx Brothers one. Okay. Um, Any, anything a little more original or just all Marx Brothers? I'm trying to think. Um, uh, I, kn- I know he, he had a certain sense of humor. Um, By the way, you have like 50 really... seconds left. Oh, great. You have to think of something. Pressure, 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 pressure. Um, um, 45 seconds. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> <okay>. what? <laughs> oh, if we were carrying something, if we if our hands were full and yeah. we were carrying like a head or something heavy, he would walk over to us and say, Hey, got a match? Oh, cute, <laughs> cute. That's awesome. That's very, very adorable. Man, your dad had a good sense of humor. Mm-hmm. All right, I love you. Have a wonderful Shabbos. You have wonderful shop. It's too sweetheart. Mm-hmm. Love you. All right. Love you. Take care.